It's time to make a choice. Are you going to keep doing the same thing, one hard Metcon after the next, aimlessly running your head against the wall and telling yourself the beatdown will eventually pay off, only to show up next year with the same problems, the same weaknesses, and really the same score on the leaderboard? Or will you start to identify your weaknesses, train those weaknesses, and improve them? Will you build a base that will keep you strong, fit, and healthy all year, one that will actually support your desire to achieve your goals? Now is the time to make that choice. Don't waste another year. With six different training paths and additional skill focus progressions, we have a training program that will fit every level of individual in the sport, from the beginner to the games athlete, and you get access to all of them. Our new training cycle starts on May 8th. Head to trainingthinktank.com to join our eight-week no-limit cycle. And one of the things that we found is like, we, we talk to these people and most of them have been doing CrossFit for one, two, three years in a class environment where they're modifying things like ring muscle ups for burpee pull-ups. Yeah. And every single week, that's the same thing, the same modification. And after three years, you're like, I still don't have my ring muscle up. I still don't have my strict handstand push up. Where do I go from here? And I thought to you that yeah. it would be a good idea to talk about like, how do we get you out of the scale division into yeah. a RX style division where you can do all those skills? Yeah. It's kind of like the whole sport it for most people is centered around open quarterfinals or things that replicate open and quarterfinals, right? right? Like it's qualifiers for Wadapalooza and local competitions and all of those competitions are based on how the sport is being done from CrossFit for top sure. down. Which means there's muscle ups, there's <laughs> squat snatches, there's handstand walks, there's handstands, and those skills are they're pretty high level. Like we call it the intermediate division in CrossFit, but somebody that can do handstand walking and is training to be on their hands is actually a pretty good athlete. Yeah, it's for almost sure. we've actually we we're talking about before the podcast, like should we name rename the intermediate division? Because it makes it like almost like people or, feel like they're less than, yeah, but it's like, no, you're yeah, still really like, good yeah, at the sport. You're still awesome, but you just like, you're trying to compete and be in the top 10 percentile, which means you need all of these high level skills. So our intermediate program is built to be able to give you all of those foundational skills at the level that you could compete at them in the top 10%, which means you need to squat snatch. Like what do the numbers yeah, came for, up for with? men? It's over 185 for yeah. women. It's like 115 to 125 now, yeah. which, which has changed over the last three years. We've done this on a different podcast, but the weights have gone up by 15 or 20 pounds for one RMs yeah. for cycling. And yeah. now you have to have those things to your point, like yeah. muscle ups and handstand walking. Whereas before you didn't have to have those to get into the top 10%. Yeah. So we built the intermediate program and we love it and people have loved it and they get their muscle ups and they get all this. But when people have have come into the program without that one, two, three years of experience. And then they're just trying to like literally get into the intermediate division to start working on those higher level skills. There's kind of this like big fitness gap to get out of scaled. And I think it's because of just, you go to a CrossFit gym and if there's muscle ups in it, in a, in a workout, maybe one or two athletes in each class can do it. And almost everybody else is just going to scale down. Right. So you're not really working on some of the things. So there could be people in CrossFit that are like two, three years in, they're really fit. They can do burpees. Well, they can row well, they can just do some of the basic lifting well, but they still can't do a strict pull up. So it's kind of this weird, uh, weird thing to like the scaled athletes in CrossFit are actually really good athletes. But I feel like if you want to compete, you almost have to take it more seriously. Like you got to step yourself up to another level to start actually purposefully working on the things that hold you back to do those like more higher level things like the higher, higher skill, higher strength, higher force production skills that are required. Yeah. So the athlete that comes in typically is actually really fit. If we're just like looking at metrics of basic body weight stuff with like burpees and rowing and, and those kind of things, yeah. but they usually don't have the requisite strength to do the higher level skills. So yeah. that's what we're talking about here yeah. is like, how do we develop those things? The, the ring muscle ups or the strict handstand pushups yeah. or the handstand walking, all these things that I think the tendency for most people is to go into the gym, they scale or modify like we already talked about. And then eventually they're like, I'm just going to do this on my own. I, I start kicking up on the wall and seeing if I can handstand walk, yeah. or I'm going to start kind of slinging myself over the rings and maybe you get one or two, but the technique's not very good. Yeah. The problem is, is that it becomes very, you're pro progress becomes very stagnant over time, or you just don't progress at all. Like, okay, yeah. I get one muscle up and then this year's open. I still only do one muscle up next yeah. year's open. I still only get one muscle up. Whereas the sport in general is progressing at maybe a five or 10% rate now, because I'm not practicing those skills. I'm only at a one or 2% rate. Yeah. So to kind of get back to the, what do you do to get out of the scale division? I would say like one of the first and most important things, and it's 
amplified now that Bosman is control of it is that you need a gymnastics base. Like you need fundamental grip strength to be able to do strict or lightly weighted pull-ups. You need fundamental hand and wrist strength and shoulder strength to just be able to kick up into a wall facing handstand and just developing what I would call foundation gymnastics skills. Cause oftentimes we get into CrossFit and the higher level athletes that get into it, they built this somehow they did push-ups and pull-ups and calisthenics when they were kids and they kind of have those skills. So when they start doing kip swings and technical practice work, they have enough requisite base gymnastic strength to learn those next level skills for a beginner athlete, or maybe not a beginner, but somebody that's trying to go into intermediate, whatever you would call that person underneath it. You almost need like a strength cycle, yeah, that a true give, on-ramp program to get you there. Yeah. That gives you, and it doesn't really take that long. If you're doing structured progressive training five days a week for a period of time and you're building hand strength and eccentrics and chin over bar time, you can make a lot of progress in developing your gymnastics foundation. So that way, when you go into more advanced gymnastics skills, you've worked on those things. Yeah. It's funny because in every other sport, when you start, everyone has to learn the foundations first. Yeah. So like my daughter, who's about to turn five next week, she's doing a gymnastics class right now. And gymnastics probably more than anything, yeah. like you start at the fundamentals, yeah. even if you can do other things, they have her every single time she goes in the class doing the very basics, the, yeah. the understanding of just spatial awareness. And yeah. then obviously she'll graduate from yeah, that level to level one and two and so on and so forth, yeah. however far she wants yeah, to yeah. go. I think about football in the same way, like the very first thing I was doing is working on footwork yeah, as I three got- point stances. It, exactly. Yeah. And it was like the, the very basics first. And then we again, graduated into the other things that in, you know, we talk about golf all the time, but it's like posture, alignment, grip, yeah. posture, alignment, grip. Yeah. That's, those are the first things before you're even swinging the golf club so that you can set yourself up for success. Whereas in CrossFit, and I know you and I had a very similar experience where we could do some of those things and we just like, you jumped up to the rings. I think you I did muscle did ups it. the first time. Yeah. And that's awesome because you were already talented, but how much better would it have been for you, Max, if someone would have sat there with you and taught you how to properly kip over the rings, have full body control yeah. and do those things well? first. Yeah. I basically, for me, like my on ramping to it was I had built requisite strength foundation, right? I had spent time doing lat pull downs and grip training and weighted pull ups and bench pressing. So like my hands and arms and lats and all these things were strong enough to do the skills, but I never learned the true foundation of gymnastics. I just got into CrossFit with very inefficient technique and was better than most people. But then you start competing and going up and you realize like, oh yeah, better than most yeah. isn't good enough. Like right. you need the foundational skills. You need your body to be in a good alignment when you're doing 30 of them because by rep 10, you're tired. And if you're sloppy, you start bleeding energy versus the people that really have a good yeah. foundation. And by the way, now more than ever, right? Yeah. And as the sport continues to improve, now it matters even more how well you move. And yeah. as we've talked about in the past with the elite athletes, movement speed and movement economy play such a big role. Like yes. those that just are using less effort per rep are going to be more successful in the sport because everyone's so good. And so we could we could kind of take that back to the beginner or the intermediate athlete and say, you know what, instead of jumping in right away and just doing all of these skills, let's learn them the correct way. So you do have that base. And I've, I've alluded to this before, talked about this kind of concept of like build a foundation of your house before you build your walls. Yeah. And people, Chris makes fun of me every time I say something like that, but no, no that one's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't like the taco well, one. The, yeah, the taco yeah. one. <laughs> no, I did like the taco uh, one. Here's your shell. Very, put some beef in it. I liked it. <laughs> Made me hungry. I uh, think I ate tacos. Yeah, that night. good, good. Those are my favorite. Yeah, but everyone understands that concept, yeah. right? Like, if you watch a house being built, they yeah. need to have a a yeah. nice foundation first, so that you build this house and doesn't fall over in three years or yeah. something like that. And that's what we want to do with our bodies, not only so that we can get the skills, but also like just health and longevity. You yeah. know, like I want to be able to do this for a long time, not just two or three years. So, like, let's build a foundation that allows me to move well, so I stay healthy. Well, fuck move that! Well. I want a house now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, and that. My my friends, it's the mindset you don't want if you're trying to yeah, build but, your foundation. But, but why is it then that yeah. like that's most people? Yeah, I mean, about, look, it's I, not even about CrossFit. It's just yeah, everything, right? I did it too, so I wouldn't judge people. It's just I've lived the mistakes. Both and of us then have. had to go back and build the foundation, and then thought. Man, I was so stupid. I should have just learned this first. And that's why we yeah. have this podcast. <laughs> exactly. So I think that's the. That is the coaching process, right? Like, I think that's one of the reasons why the phrase 
those who can't do teach exists. It's not because they're not good at doing things. It's because they've messed up so many times and made so many mistakes and learned with other people that they understand like, oh, well, these are the things that separate the people that I see that I was competing against that were successful right. versus what I did. And I made all these mistakes. Now, if I'm going to help other people try to climb the mountain, I'm going to make sure they don't do it like me. Yeah, and totally. one of those things for sure for me was definitely foundational gymnastics skills. That, so that would be one. Number two would be like an understanding of basic barbell and dumbbell skill in the sport. And that includes just understanding the basics of 1RMs for the weightlifting movements. You're not going to get all of that technique immediately, but just kind of understanding some education of like, here's a good position. Here's a bad position. Here's where I want my hips. Here's where I don't want my hips. I need to be in this position at the bottom of my overhead squat. If I'm not there, I need to do mobility for it and learning basic technique of barbell cycling to know that like, okay, you're going to learn a snatch. And if you go to a technique expert in the snatch, they're going to teach you a snatch the certain way. Now you're going to get into the sport and it's going to be do 30 for time <laughs> at 30% of that. And now you're like, well, now you don't need that technique. You need a different technique. Yeah. So I think an awareness of what the barbell and dumbbell cycling, all the skills that you need to do with it. I don't think a lot of people that are just generally taking classes have developed the variation in their skill set. Like a lot of times you see people in a class, some of them move great. Like they're snatching 135 pound power snatches in something like Isabel or 95 and it looks good, but every single rep they're getting set up, getting their butt down because they've had the mechanics pushed into them right. a lot, which is necessary and it helps keep people healthy. But once you get to a competitive level, it's like, all right, well now things just change a little bit. We don't want you like having slop fest 2023. Is it 2023? It is. Yeah. Slop fest. Sorry. We want people to understand like, all right, well there's a new technique. So I think right. that's the same type of thing is just learning the foundations of barbell cycling and dumbbell cycling. So that way, when you kind of move up and now you start doing them at speed, you're doing them more safely. You're doing them faster. You're doing them with more weight and you're able to keep your positions when you're tired, which yeah. is the you most You have the right thing. technique based on the movement. So if it's yeah. a 1RM, we're setting up a certain way. If it's 30 for time, like you said with yeah. Isabel or in a workout, five rounds for time of 10 clean and jerks and 10 burpees, like you're going to cycle the barbell differently. Learning that as a fundamental, again, as that foundation piece will allow you to move quickly into an intermediate and into an RX uh, level, you know, training program. Yeah. And then I think I'd have a third and final one, and then maybe you can add to them. Uh, my thought would be if you're trying to be competitive and you're not yet competitive and you're, even if you're trained and you're fit, because like my experience getting into CrossFit, I was pretty in shape. I was doing MMA on a regular basis. I was going and doing bodybuilding training. I was doing some running intervals so I could breathe well. I could move my body. I was not an untrained athlete, but I was a beginner in terms of competing in CrossFit. And I think the jump from what I was doing into competitive CrossFit was just too aggressive too soon. I didn't think like, okay, well, instead of going in and doing something like uh, Angie, which was like 100 pull-ups, 100, it's hundreds yeah, yeah, of yeah. things. It made my arms so sore. I think it partially almost gave me like <laughs> rhabdo. If I had just spent three months, two months, a month doing progressive basic foundational work in that thing and then built some volume in it in interval format and then did the workout, I probably would have been fine and never got sore. Yeah. It's like the analogy of if you put a frog from a normal environment into boiling water, it'll jump right out. But if you take a frog and you put it in lukewarm water and you slowly heat it up, it'll actually boil to death, which I don't know if that's true. I don't <laughs> want to run that experiment. Yeah, Let's not do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of my thought process too with training is that a lot of people, especially if you're A-type and you're getting into competing, you want to jump into For the sure. full. You're like right away. You're like five days a week. I'm going to do 90 minute sessions where sometimes it'd be like, all right, you could try that. But the likelihood you get hurt in the first month or you get burnt out in the first month is pretty high. So instead just start a little bit slower slower. Just start purposefully a little slower and then jump in. I think that's like, those would be kind of the three major mistakes that I think people make if they're truly trying to get out of scale and compete and be an intermediate athlete or be a top 10 quarter 
finals athlete or compete in the sport or do the skills. Those are the kind of the three things that I think are just most common that set people up for failure. Yeah. And, and I agree with all those. And I think that the last thing I would say is just play the long game. You know, it's, it's really easy. And Chris talked about this already. Like people just want to jump in. You said that, and I get it. Like we both did that. That's why we, we wanted to talk about <laughs> yeah. this. But if you play the long game and think about not just what can I do over the summertime or the next couple of months and like have some fun and do some hard workouts, but yeah. how can I get better for the open in 2024? Or maybe you have a goal of yeah. a local competition that you want to qualify for, or the last three years, I've only been been able to get into the scale division and now I want to do the intermediate division at Wadapalooza or something like yeah. that, then play the long game so that you can get better at all of the basic skills, get better at all of your Olympic lifting, build a big aerobic base, which is kind of what you're talking about yeah. by not jumping in, like yeah. build that aerobic base first so that you can do everything yeah. and support it with good systems. Yeah. I was thinking you can't build a taco without a taco shell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we need <laughs> we need the taco shell first, Chris. No, so I mean I th- you can't like, build a taco bowl though. That is true. Yeah. That's a, probably my favorite yeah, actually. Nice. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good point. Yeah. So I think that's it. I we didn't have this long sexy podcast. Um we understand that talking about building a foundation and all that stuff isn't like the most sexy thing that's out there to do a podcast. But truly, if you want to be that sexy thing that does muscle ups and snatches and whatever, a lot of it really is kind of the like more mundane, boring, like common sense knowledge. It's like do the basics, eat well, take care of yourself. And if you're not doing that stuff yet, you're never going to go from zero to professional athlete in one jump. So on ramp yourself well And I think that would be kind of the, that would be the major like takeaways from this. And then our solution to it, because we've been dealing with this problem. And part of the reason why we wanted to film this uh, podcast of us talking was that we're launching a beginner path or an on-ramp program for people that want to get into our online community compete. That is built in to compete. Yeah. Just built in. Uh, If you're in there and you think, um, I've been following intermediate and it's too much and I need to go do the foundation. It's there and it's 12 weeks long. And if you're somebody that's listened to our podcast or who has been like, you kind of got the competitive itch and you're not sure, but you like, no, you don't have the skills yet. And you look at the intermediate sample week and you're like, wow, that's too much for me. And you need kind of a bridge to be able to do that. This was our solution to that. So we're kind of excited about it. Uh, do you want to just give like a little quick summary of details? Of yeah, what's in I, it? I think it is, again, we're trying to draw back on, okay, we want you to get from this very basic beginner, like you are fit in the sport. Maybe you've done some classes before. You love to do all of the CrossFit stuff, but you don't have these basic skills or awareness of the barbell. So like those two things are the big picture items that we're trying to approach, right? We want you to be strong enough to where you can do pull-ups and kick up on your hands, be able to do a handstand push-up. We want you to be able to hold a barbell and do a snatch and a clean and jerk, learn all the power lifts and do those things well. Yeah. And then within that program, we then want to be able to differentiate between a 1RM snatch versus 30 for time, like yeah. you talked about earlier. Earlier. And the same thing with our gymnastics skills. Like maybe you're doing burpees at one pace and a longer workout versus a little bit faster and a shorter workout. We're building all these like basic concepts to be competitive in the sport. So it's not just a, Hey, we're just going to do a beginner program. And it's like, yeah. you're going to throw you out there. We're educating you along the way so that you learn how to compete in the sport at the very basic level so that then you can graduate into our intermediate path, which essentially is then the path that's going to build the endurance of those skills. So yeah. think about this as we're going to build the, the kind of the foundation to get the skills and then the intermediate path will be the endurance of those skills so you can go to a competition and do 25 toes to bar in a round yeah chris mentioned something in a previous podcast we talked about competing and like what makes good competitors good competitors and he was like you have to do the reps you have to go into competitions you have to get that feeling those nerves those experiences the ups and the downs and riding them I think of the same thing in training. Like if you want to develop muscle ups, you're going to eventually have to do the reps. Right. But if all of your reps were low quality, if you have built all of your reps with a poor foundation, by the time you've put in all your reps and you got them to where they're going to get, you've lowered your ceiling if you didn't build a proper foundation. So what we're trying to do is educate people on the mindful approach to what they're going to do over the course of the rest of their competitive career so that they're stronger to be able to do things properly and more mindfully early on so that way they get up to their peak potential. So I think that's kind of the 
I don't even know if it's a pitch or just like, hey, this is how we designed it. And we know that there is a problem. We know that people out there want to compete and don't really know how to do it. So this is kind of a iteration solution number one to get more people involved with us. Yeah. And this is like if I took on a one on one client and I'm writing for them individually, they came to me and they didn't have the very basic skills. This is where they would start too. Yeah. You know, this is the, the way that we're looking at this is I want to play that long game, like I talked about, where we're going to build all of those basic foundational skills and get you to the point where you can graduate into, again, that intermediate path where you're able to, to go and compete at a, a high-level competition or even your local competition that you have a goal for. Uh, so the, the way that it's structured is you have a 12-week program. We're going to start with the first four weeks where, it's you're, you're again, you're understanding your body. You're learning how to do you know holds on the bars and the grip strength you know that you talked about, Max, and the barbell cycling and a lot of conditioning work. Like It's not left out there, so you're yeah. still doing the fun CrossFit stuff, but it's in a way that's going to build your aerobic base. And then we go on to another four weeks where we're progressing from there, where now it's a little bit more advanced with gymnastics, a little bit more advanced with the barbell. And then that, that final four weeks is kind of like we're topping you off so that you can, again, move into that next division. Yeah. So if you decide to sign up for that, obviously you'll be able to contact Brandon, Mike, Mia, Cena, myself, and be able to ask questions about how to do it. We understand like a, a 12 week program to onboard somebody that's like, Hey, I'm super high level, but I've never competed in CrossFit. You might be on ramping yourself in a month or be able to go through some of the totally. information quickly and jump into intermediate. Other people might go through the whole 12 weeks and then reach out and be like, Hey, I went through this. I still can't do pull-ups. And then it's kind of a new process. So it's just kind of a seamless way to hopefully get you started and get you integrated without being so overwhelmingly difficult. Cause we know that that sometimes does happen for me and for some a type CrossFit personality. Sometimes that's actually good because it's the hook. Like it was so hard that we're like, I never, I want to be able to rise to that <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again in the future. But more often than not, if people take that approach of taking on too much before they've built the foundation, then it's just hard to keep doing it for long periods of time. And all the people that we have in our sexy videos and our like, I don't even know if they're sexy. I don't know why I keep using that word. So sexy yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. So the sexy. videos of our people <laughs> working around out. like, where are those yeah. at? <laughs> TTT only fans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we have these videos of full workouts of people snatching over their body weight, walking on their hands, doing muscle ups and people aspire to be like that. They don't realize that the athletes that are being displayed, they built foundations. I mean, Alexis did gymnastics. She right. did exactly what you talked about your daughter going through to build that foundation. If you don't have that in your background and you want to, the outcome, sometimes you got to go back to square one and make sure that that's built properly. So yeah, screw that. I'm going to dig myself into the dirt <laughs> and follow <laughs> yeah, yeah, RX program yeah, because yeah. it's more fun. Yeah. Well, I know a, nice a lot thing. of people will do that, but you can do that too if you want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's what I was going to say is the nice thing is we built it into where you sign up and you have access to all the yeah. paths. And so if someone can go for four weeks in the, you know, the on-ramp and then move into intermediate and then move yeah. into RX, you can do that. Oh, and then yeah. you also have access to our movement mobility path, which is one of my favorites because it keeps <laughs> me feeling healthy and, <laughs> and somewhat mobile, even though I'm super tight now. But you can do all of those things and yeah. our coaches are in there to help. Like yeah. we have, we answer questions all the time on like, which path should I follow? Or, Hey, I'm busy this week. Should I, you know, scale down on these certain workouts? And like the answer is we have coaches in there to, to help you with that. Yeah. yeah. Or you, like I said, you could do it the way these guys said that they did it. Learn the hard way, yeah. you know, and then when you're ready, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I really do mean it. I wish I could go back and change the way that I started. I and mean, most people would probably say yeah. that, right? Like hindsight's 2020, but I think I caused myself injury and a lot of frustration by trying to jump in too soon, not only with CrossFit, but with everything, like with football and all the other things I did instead of just kind of let, let me learn how to move well first. And yeah. that would have saved me from yeah. a lot of pain. Speaking of the people that will just jump into RX and do it. Cause I know if, if there's people that are not scaled athletes, they might just listen to this to say, Oh, like how does, how do, how would Max and Brandon think about getting a scaled athlete more competitive? So if you are listening to this and you are one of those people that jumps in and you're super fit and you can handle it, I would venture to guess and wager a lot of my life savings on it, that at some point in your life, some of the things that you can do very naturally and very easily, like snatching or handstand walking and things that you just jumped into without building a foundation, at some point, those skills will become really hard to do for you. Your shoulder will hurt you. Like, right, right. For leading into this season when I was going to do the open before I sprained my ankle, I couldn't do ring muscle ups and catch properly because there was just a lot of pain and irritation in the shoulder that I had surgery on when I was 18. 
and I couldn't just go up and do them. So I literally had to go and do like, okay, I had to do three weeks of just getting myself supported on the rings. And then I had to put my feet on a box and go down to the bottom. And like, I had to go the humble route because I had no choice. So if you are good and you see the beginner path, go look at it. And if you do ever get to the point where like, you know, you have to take a long off season or something that can be a good place to go back and just realize how important the basics are, even if you're great. Like it always comes back to like, even our podcast with Brent and all of our athletes, when we talk to them, they're so focused on all the basic things, yeah. food, warm ups, cool downs technique. So I think building that foundation and seeing how we would try to build that foundation could be valuable for you even if you don't identify as a beginner. Yeah. That Brent is a great example because I watched uh, he and his coach out there working on deadlift setup. Yeah. So he's been doing the sport for however many years, yeah. nine years, 10 years, yeah. over 500 he, pound yeah. deadlift. He, he knows how to do that, but like sometimes it, it goes away or there's like one little thing that may be off. Yeah. And so by getting that kind of like, you're always reviewing the, yeah. the, those basics. And so to, to Max's point, I think that's a great idea. I use a lot of those skills that we yeah. wrote into the beginner program all the time yeah. in my training because yeah. I, I, I want to stay healthy and it's just, it allows me to be more resilient when I do go hard in the sport. Yeah. All right. That's all we got, ladies and gentlemen, get out of scaled and then join us in intermediate after beginner. <laughs> <laughs> For those serious about the sport of fitness, now is the time to build strength, gymnastic skills, and improve your overall capacity. We have divisions for RX, intermediate, masters, and elite athletes. For more information, go to trainingthinktank.com.